Judah and the Lion with us right now. I am so excited. Okay, I need to get over it. Okay, I'm container. getting over it. Okay. We're so excited too. I'm about to be really professional now. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> don't be no, nervous. Don't do that. <laughs> They're humans. Um, I know. It's so exciting though. So anyway, um, we saw that you guys were just named by Rolling Stone one of the top ten bands to know about. And we were just kind of thinking, like, what was it like? that day when that came out did you know that that was coming out or that they were going to say that about you no we didn't <laughs> we were glad when they did though it was uh it was like such a big honor we yeah. we as a band um i don't know when, when things like that kind of uh i don't know if you call them bucket list things as a band or, or whatever it is yeah. uh you know maybe playing a different venue or playing a late night television show or something um it really is like it feels um very honoring and like amazing um but you also have to kind of put it in perspective and um keep working hard and kind of keep putting on um i don't know just like the 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 heart behind like our music and stuff is kind of like making sure that that uh that's what rings true not necessarily the bucket list item things that um when that happens is it just like that's amazing they're saying that or is it is it also now there's this new level of pressure or anything like that I don't think, I think we've been pretty good about not really feeling pressure just because, um, especially with this last album, Full Cough and Roll, like with our music, we've never really tried to fit in any kind of box yeah. and just tried to kind of do what we do. Um, and so it's so humbling and awesome. And like you said, like it's kind of, we have a lot of bucket list items, but as some of those things have come true, we've realized that that's not what fulfills us. Um, and we're so humbled and thankful for him, but. Um, we just kind of keep moving on and keep doing what we do. So, When you guys, one thing that's really cool is this sound that you sort of discovered that other people really weren't doing. There was like a hole in the industry for that sound. How did you discover it? The, yeah. I'd say it was like kind of an accident. Was it? Kind of like a natural just progression of like us growing together as a band. Um, a big part of our sound is the mandolin and banjo, which yeah. is kind of like that folky side that you hear. Mm-hmm. Um, and me and Nate um, just kind of started playing those instruments when we got to college, which was around the time that we met Judah and, and Spence and started playing. So mm-hmm. I think it's just kind of a blend of kind of like this folk thing with the acoustic instruments, acoustic guitar, and, and then also um, like what our love is for music growing up and like our influences are so spread like wide like we love hip-hop we love folk we love like nate loves like metal like we're we're just like into like a bunch of different kind of sounds so just kind of we try to blend that in the most like true to us way that we can and it was so well received were you worried when you did discover it and you started putting it together like what if it's not well received it's different so what if people don't accept it did you ever worry about that yeah, I, I think especially like very um, early on, you know, the fans that kind of followed us before uh, with our first record called Kids These Days, it's more of like in the, I mean, it had the synth, um, like bass on it and stuff like that and synth sounds that we were kind of progressively moving towards more this more like hip hop rock thing that we, we had, but it was so different from what this like, I guess, fan base that we kind of built, um, especially across the Southeast. Um, you know, it was kind of scary coming out with this like pretty much pretty much new sound, even for our band, um, and to kind of put it out in the world. And then like, I mean, we, I mean, people, what we've discovered too on like Twitter or social media, like if they like it, they like it, but they're gonna tell you if they don't like yeah. it too. And they're not afraid to tell you. And so I don't know if you can relate to that as a radio station here, but um, kind of. Uh, so yeah, it was like it was kind of nerve wracking because we, we felt like in a lot of ways. Maybe the fans that love the first record maybe didn't get this one, um, but at, at at the same time, it's like, well, we're just making music because it's true to us, and hopefully, it can relate to other people. And now that we've seen this um, expansion uh, and, and kind of growth or whatever you want to say, it it just like uh, it means a lot that it's connecting with people and um, what we've kind of gone through as a band together and, and kind of discover this um, new sound or whatever, if you will, uh, to mean to us that it's connecting and it means something to other people it means a lot to us and i think what's really cool is that it crossed over from alternative to top 40 stations were playing take it all back and that must have been it's like okay people are getting it people are really liking it so 
about the song Take It All Back, did you know that was a hit when you wrote it? Like, this is the song. I, I don't know if we we knew it would be a hit, but um, that's that's probably the, the song that has come together the quickest. Uh, oh. We wrote it like three years ago. So it was kind of, it was right after really? our Kids These Days record came out. We were rehearsing for that headlining tour and uh, we'd been in the shed for like three days, just kind of grinding out and figuring everything out. And oh. we were playing another one of our songs and um, I started playing the, what's now the Take It All Back riff just at the end of another song. And Jude was like, hey, that's cool. Let's stop working and like start playing kind of was how it felt oh. and so we all started jamming and within 30 minutes take it all back was written essentially and it hasn't even changed that much since then and so it's it's kind of one of the most organic free songs that we've written and we love the energy of it we started yeah. playing it at every show since then and it was really obvious that there was this feeling about it that we liked and the crowd really reacted to and so in that way we knew it was a special song but still at that point we didn't expect anyone other than our moms to want to play us on the radio. So it was just, um, so to be here now, a few years later, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. That's yeah. so cool. That's such a good story about that. It came together so fast. What's the shed? <laughs> um, we used to, uh, rehearse in this, it was literally like a small shed. It was on music row in, in Nashville. Um, Cool. One of our friends had kind of a studio house on the row, and there was this little shed that we asked to rent out for a few days, and nothing special that. at all. You just go in, and it's this open area, maybe 20 feet by 20 feet, and we were all in a circle, and that was where a lot it's of really our... Really loud. Very yeah, it was grudgy. very loud, and that was where a lot of That's our so cool. ideas and where our rehearsals would happen when we were yeah. getting started. And so. You just referenced your moms. Um, did did anybody get any pushback when you guys decided to start pursuing music as a career from family or anything? Like, maybe you should look into something else. I think... I, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that we really did. Like, our, our families have been pretty supportive of this. Okay. Um, it's always... Which we're super thankful for. Like, me and Nate uh, dropped out when we went full time and just kind of left college, um, Spencer and Judah were able to graduate. Um, but so we we're actually all the business decisions. Yeah, what did you yeah. major at? <laughs> <laughs> I did music business. Oh, okay. I did social entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it was uh, the uh, we I don't played get baseball. To say our majors. What? We don't get to say our major. Well, y'all didn't. She, I, th I didn't think she asked you guys because you didn't graduate. Oh, no, no, what oh, is your awkward. major? Just because we didn't <laughs> graduate. Oh, no, what was your major? <laughs> we majored in music with a minor in music business. Okay. And uh, I did banjo, and my dad was actually oh. the one who told me to drop out. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so really, like, you can, you can always go back to school, but you might not ever have another Jew in the line. So they're really said, using their majors. Out, so wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. But I think the most most flack that I kind of caught was uh, I played baseball as well at Belmont oh. in college, and um, a lot of the guys that I was like close friends with at the time, their parents like were very supportive in music, but just kind of like it would always be like that. Like, but when when are you actually going to get a real job? Yeah. Type okay. question. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's kind of like inspired me um, to kind of like be like bump that. And it's kind of like honestly like thinking about like the song suit and jacket. It's kind of. Yeah thinking about those conversations especially when they're dropping out of school and um you're having conversations with older older parents that don't really necessarily understand i guess you like heart or drive for music and and wanting to to be actually like something that you you love to do but you also get to do with your life and so um awesome. hopefully we get to keep doing it so yeah we'll see. So awesome. And um, you guys mentioned the bucket list. I think I'm over my time, but oh, you guys no, are so enjoy. interesting. Um, the the bucket list of things that you've gotten to do and all of that, what is something that you look towards as like, that would be something we'd love to be able to do together? Like, is there a goal ahead? I, th I think we have so many. Oh, well, wow. Yeah, and we could probably all list off, you know, venues or things to check off the list. But I, I think... If we're looking kind of towards the long term, um, I think if we can still be friends and treat each other well and be doing this in 10 to 15 years, then that would be a be a pretty awesome bucket list thing. Because, yeah. you know, it, it seems like every month now or week, it seems like we're getting a new, you get to go do this or you yeah. get to go be yeah. in this place. And it, it's it's amazing, you know, but I think we realized pretty early on that if we're striving for that next thing, you know, that day will come to an end. Um, and then how do you feel at the end of that? Is that what you invested your 
time and effort towards or are you thinking big picture with what really matters and to be with guys that I love and we've been through a lot together I mean to still be doing this and hopefully continue to have that in the future I think that would be the Sorry to get sappy, but like I'm, that's a, I'm, I'm like emotional. living for it. <laughs> I know, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I apologize. You just thought it was going to be a simple interview, and now you're getting an Oprah Everyone's moment. Everyone's crying. Everyone's crying at this point. Well, uh, you guys were talking about bucket lists, and one of my bucket lists is actually to be friends with all four of you. Friendship. And Let's you already it. told me that you saw a tweet. So basically, we're already on second base of friendship. Yes, we are. I really uh, think we're, so. Yeah. We're close. I don't know. <laughs> to me, there could be a million bases if you want. Depends how far you want to go with me. So basically, all I just need to know if I send you like a friendship request on Facebook, will I get a yes? Yes, you would. Absolutely. I don't have Facebook. Absolutely. But yes, you would. I know they don't. No one no ever one has, has Facebook. Stop asking. You that. would accept. Okay, per Instagram. Okay, perfect. We'll get that follow back. See, you know, see, stuff. see. I think I, I'm. I'm leaving you. you I'm make joining it so the band. Awkward. <laughs> Goodbye. You're joining the band. I'm gonna play the tambourine. I'm so. <laughs> they don't want that. They I know they look like egg shaker. Wait. So are you guys married? No, yes. I'm gay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we're, we're, I mean, but I mean, we're it's basically like kind of marriage. marriage. Okay. It's really it's sick. We y'all live in the same are a cute couple. Place. Otherwise, yeah. thank you. Yeah. We, we have three children together. <laughs> <laughs> I have three children. We're like radio soulmates. But yeah. Yeah, we're yeah we're radio. I basically stalked her and broke her down, kind of like what I'm going to do with you guys. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> That's threatening. We're anyway, <laughs> thank you for spending so much time with us. Absolutely. It was so yeah, nice to talk to you. Oh, perfect. I mean, I have more questions. Yeah, this is a beautiful view. We, we love yeah. San, like San Diego is probably one of our favorite cities in in the world. Oh, uh, wow. We love love being here and uh, the very first conversation we had with you guys uh, over some beers. Um, with Jeremy is is like such a uh, I don't know. We just kind of I don't know that these like relationships you get to form uh, with radio stations and on the road. Um, it means a lot to to bands that you know are kind of new to radio or whatever as far as like the last six months go. So. Um, anyways, just say thanks so much for the support here, and we can't wait to be back in San Diego. Anytime, guys. Anytime you guys want to come in. Yeah. Now that we're friends, we have now to that keep we're back. Friendship. I already we sent you a DM <laughs> with my phone number in it. Don't worry about it. Things are so, happening. Things are so <laughs> weird that you <laughs> said it. Third base. I'm sorry. Third base. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Judah and Lion. Thanks.